Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? I hope you guys are doing good. I actually hope you guys are doing well because I am doing well. I am doing amazing. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> Whether you asked or not, thank you for asking. If you have been watching me for a while, at least for the past one year, um, if you're a member of the Daisy tribe, of the Daisy sisterhood, the most interesting tribe to be a part of, okay? We actually do have a lot of fun on this channel. Please subscribe if you're not. But yeah, if you have been watching me for a while, you will know that my life has changed drastically in the past one year, okay? At least this time last year, my life was totally different from what my life is right now. Totally different, different place, different house, different country, different everything. Different setup, different chimo. <laughs> a lot of things have actually changed and I have learned a lot of lessons in the past one year. Um, some of them are not really new lessons, but I think I have now understood them very well. You know, there's a difference between knowing and understanding, okay? There's a difference between knowing and experiencing uh, here. So a lot has happened to me. I feel like in the last one year, um, my eyes have seen something. I won't really say negative or positive. To be honest, I won't, it's not, a, it's not really like a negative experience. Well, net positive, right? But I've had a few negative experiences here and there. And I have been reflecting on some of these things lately. You guys, I'm turning 40 very soon. Um, is in four years, but you know, who cares? <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> I'm, I'm soon going to officially be an auntie. I feel like when you enter 40, that's when you are now officially, officially an auntie. You know, if, you are, if when you're in your 30s, you're still, you're still playing, you're still joking. When you're in your 40s, that's when you're now a real African rich auntie. If you have money, rich auntie. If you don't have money, auntie. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. So yeah, I've learned a lot and I wanted to share with you guys some of those lessons, okay? So, lesson number one is that your life can change literally in the blink of an eye. I'll be in a blink of an eye. Just like this, at the snap of your fingers, your life can actually change. We say these things, I feel like we say these things, but sometimes we don't really understand how serious it is okay or how serious it can be it can change for good it can change for bad hopefully it never changes for bad we always pray for positive you know we always pray for progress and you know blessings and good things to happen to us however things can change in the blink of an eye like last year this time last year i had no idea eh? i didn't even have an inkling that i would be where i am today like when I say I had no idea, I had no idea. August, my, my, I found out about this whole relocation stuff in August. So August is going to make it one year since my life changed, basically. <laughs> right? But as at this time last year, I did not know that I will be in a different country. I didn't know I'm going to be, my whole, my life is going to be different. I have a new set of friends, people that I don't even know that I was ever going to meet in this life. You know, you don't see yourself sitting down, talking and bonding with people that... Like, I don't want to explain this thing. See, I think it's different for some people, right? So some people, when they are planning to relocate or leave the country, it takes time, okay? So it takes like a year or two. So they have mentally kind of conditioned themselves. They've read a lot about where they are going to. They've heard a lot. They've asked questions about where they are going to. Me, I did not have... In fact, even if I have ever thought about relocating, the UK was never a part of it. Like, I know more about relocating to Canada than I know about the UK, <laughs> right? If I had been told last year to write down where I think I'm going to be in the next one year, I couldn't have written all these things that happened to me, right? So your life can literally change in the blink of an eye. So yeah, you need to enjoy your life thoroughly, right? Enjoy your life, but also be ready for change, okay? Have it somewhere in your head that things can actually change for you overnight there are things that have happened to me that i never expected it okay there are things that happened to me that it just happened out of the blues and it's good though it's, it's sweet when it is a positive thing but what if it is a negative thing okay what if like god forbid we don't pray for negative things to happen but that's how negative things happen right it's also in a blink of an eye your life can just change drastically i've not really like fleshed out this my thoughts very well but I don't know. If you guys get it, you get it. And if you have something to add, please, you know, put it in the comment section because this is literally me 
thinking out loud. Like I didn't really, I just wrote down the points. I didn't really think about these things very well, but yeah, just be ready for it because your life can actually change just like that. Now, the next one is that adjusting to change is all about your mindset. Okay. You miss what you decide to miss. Okay. You feel bad about what you decide to feel bad about. You feel happy and contented about what you decide to feel happy and contented about. So, like I said, my life changed drastically last year. And when that change first happened, I actually struggled with it. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I actually struggled with the change. I was holding on to so much. It felt like I had anchored my life to certain things. And, you know, I was basically losing grip of all those things. And I did not adjust to it quickly. I actually mentally suffered <laughs> because I didn't adjust to those. I didn't adjust to my new reality quickly. Okay. So last year when I was told that we were relocating, when we started the whole process and stuff like that, I did not do it with as much joy and energy. Like I was not explaining it, but I didn't do it with as much anticipation, happiness, like I should have or that, that I should have. I don't know what I'm even speaking at this point. So yeah, I remember feeling bad. I remember feeling, hey, how am I going to go up? How will this one happen? So I didn't really, I didn't even allow myself enjoy the whole thing. You know, people were happy for me, but I wasn't happy for myself. You know, that kind of thing now. People are like, hey, yeah, congrats, congrats. And I'm like, okay. As in, I'll smile though. I'll sound happy, but deep down in my heart, I was screaming. <laughs> You know, I was screaming because I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to miss so much. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. Ah, my life is like already like this. My house is like this. My things are like this. I was already okay with the way my life was. So thinking of that kind of drastic change was really difficult for me until I decided to change my mindset, okay? Until I decided to just tell myself that, what, is, what are you holding on to? What's your problem? Like, what's in the worry you? Like, okay. I hear and so even though you know until i changed my mindset and i decided to actually enjoy it which is part of why i even took a break i was like i've just been going 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 i saw a comment where someone said i knew you needed this break ever since you went for a mugu or something and i was like yes thank you somebody gets it okay somebody actually gets it even more than me <laughs> I couldn't have articulated it that well. Okay, somebody gets it because after the time that my husband told me that we were going to relocate, it was just from one thing to the other. There was no rest. There was no rest. Like every day, we are either planning when they will come and pack our things. We are either packing this one, I'm packing that one, I'm cleaning that one, I'm arranging that one, I'm sending this one, I'm doing that one, I'm putting this one in place, I'm talking to this person. Like I, I always have something to do one, every single day. And then I went to... Canada to go and do a go for my, my sister. I went to say for my daughter. For my sister. <laughs> and, you know, doing the whole Omugo and stuff. Basically, Omugo is taking care of a newborn baby and, you know, the mother, right? So, all of that happened. And then I came back and then continued packing, arranging, cleaning, this one. But, like, sorting out. Get someone for this. Get someone for that. Get someone to do this one. The person that I do this that will do this is coming. The person that will do that one is coming. The person that will do that one is calling you. You have to call the person that will... I like, it was a lot. And then we moved to this place. The whole relocation stuff. The whole everything that happened then. I still have issues from that thing that happened then. I will discuss in a different video. Then we basically came here in winter. I don't even know if I've even left the winter self. This is this UK weather. Uh, no BM at all. I don't know if we've, if we've left winter. But... <laughs> But anyway, so we came here in winter, you're trying to get this, you're trying to get that, we need to get this one, you need to sign this form, you need to put this person in this person, you need to know their hair, you need to learn how to drive, you need to learn that one, you need to clean that one, you need to learn where they sell that, you need to know where they do that. It was just, a lot was just happening, 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 and it got to a point and I was just like, no, I need to actually enjoy this, my new life. I feel like I was removed from a lot of experiences, I was in denial, I was just floating, I was not really enjoying myself until I decided to just change my mind. I had been changing my mind though over time, like, you know, accepting things, accepting things. Then I decided to just, you know what, just enjoy yourself, right? Enjoy your life. Breathe. <laughs> you know, so that was why I now took the break and I started to love this place, you guys. Like, I, I feel like I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I love the people here. I love the friends I've made. So many positive things have happened to me that I don't even miss the negative or not even negative. I don't even miss my old life. Right, right now, I don't miss my old life. 
But as at last year, maybe December or even January this year, I, I miss my old life so badly. But right now, I don't. Okay, so it's all about your mindset. You will think, ah, how am I going to cope? My dear, you'll be fine. You will be fine. Don't worry. Like, life is not that hard. Even my husband that hates this, well, doesn't really hate it that much, but he doesn't like this place, right? Even him, the way he, the way we were in general is not the way we are now. Like, the way we, we talk about this UK. <laughs> because when we first came, we were like, what kind of country is this? Why is there this like that? Why is that one this way? Why don't they have this? Why do they have that? You know, we, had, we were always like complaining to each other about, hey, my husband will go to work and come back and we'll just be like, in the UK, <laughs> you know, in fact, that's a very, that's one of the things that we say a lot in this house, in the UK, in the, in the UK, you know, so we had so many things to complain about, but now that I look back, it's like most of those things that we were complaining about were just the adjustment period, because we were trying to adjust, trying to settle down, trying to do this and do that, achieve this and achieve that, it was very difficult for us to enjoy ourselves, but right now, we are not completely settled though, you know, let, no, let me not even lie, we're not completely settled, we still have some things hanging over our heads that we need to achieve, but for the most part, we have settled in well now, and we're actually enjoying this place, making friends, going to church, going to different areas, and just having fun, family outings, parties, and stuff like that, I feel like that has made this place feel more like home, right? Not really like you know, you guys get the point. This place has become as homely as it can be, okay? Considering all things considered, right? So, yeah, change about your mindset, just change your mindset. You know, stop looking at things with the defeatist mindset, or stop looking at things, or stop thinking that you can't do without some things, or you can't do without some, you know people and stuff like that no my dear you'll be fine everybody will be fine everybody will move on you know ah i remember when i came here hey when i had to do some work myself i'm like oh, gene, is this how i'm going to be living my life <laughs> i need a break but right now we're all good even my children they've adjusted so much my children are so independent now when i say independent, i mean so 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 independent even sophia down to sophia my children are just like they're just chilling they're just having fun they're just on their own just having fun and I was like, what was I even scared of? What was I even tired of? What was I even afraid of? It is what it is. The next one for me, this one is even a very, very big one for me. And that is the fact that family is everything, okay? Family is everything. A good family, okay? A good family. And I don't just mean like extended family. I mean like your nuclear family, your husband and your children, your wife and your children, it is very, very important if you have a very close-knit family, okay? Especially when things, when the chips are down. If you have a very close-knit, loving family, you can actually conquer the world, okay? You can actually overcome almost anything, right? And then if you have extended families that are very close to so that, very, like your sister, your brother, I mean like extended, but immediate extended family, you know, it's very, very, very important. In this past one year, they have been my rock. My kids, my husband, my siblings, my parents have been my rock, right? And on the other hand, I have seen extended, extended families, you know, the outer extended families. Um, I have seen friends, I've seen relatives who just do nonsense that's the that's the best way i can put it i don't even want to speak english for this one they just they do nonsense they do anyhow they talk rubbish <laughs> they talk rubbish i have seen it and i'm just like it's not even a personal experience per se i always say that your relatives are those you relate with yeah those are your relatives you see all those uncle that you've not seen in the past 20 years but every time they have one complaint or the other, that, that's not your relative. That's your mother's brother. That's your father's brother. They are not your relatives, you know? So choose who chooses you. Choose who chooses you. So even if it's friends, even if it's your neighbor, even if it's your children, even if it's your auntie, even if it's your uncle, even if it's your, your cousin, even if it's your third cousin, yeah, twice removed or had this to do all those their family tree stuff even if it's someone from your from the same village as you even if it's someone from your tribe from your country as long as the person chooses you you to choose that person don't be holding on to certain relationships or something or certain friendships 
basically relationships. Don't be holding on to them because of the history. Because you're my father's brother, you're my uncle's auntie, you're my this one. Like, eh. like I've seen over time that that doesn't really work. I don't know why. I just feel like a lot of people are so frustrated. There are some things I hear people do to their siblings that I cannot even imagine doing to my own siblings. There are things I hear people say about their siblings and their siblings' children that I cannot even imagine saying about my sister and her kids or my brother and his kids. Some things that people carry in their minds about their relatives, I can't even imagine carrying it in my mind about my, my families, my, my own relatives. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, why? Why? What was the point? What was the reason? Over the years, I've, reached, I've seen those things, I'm like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I don't participate, okay? Anything you think about me, yes. Anything you say, I did. Yes, I did it. Anything you say, I said. Yes, I said it. Eh? <laughs> I even said more than you, you said. You know, the one you said, I said. That's even small. I can, I can add more. You want me to add more? I will add more to those things, okay? Anyway, I don't want to go too much into details without saying some things because it's not really my story to tell, but choose who chooses you. My dear sister, family is everything. Like that your, that your family that loves you, the one that you know that they are there for you. My dear, stick to them. Eh? Hold them tight. Hold them tight. <laughs> Hold them, JJ. No, seriously, like I'm, I'm being very serious right now, even though I'm not really explaining myself very well. But if you get it again, you get it. Another one, which is kind of related, but not really. But another one that I've really learned about myself in particular in the past one year, or in the past, well, the past few years, not just one year, in the past few years, but at least the past one year has made it more, you know, prominent for me or more obvious for me, right? People perceive me in a, there's a way people perceive me. Some people, not all, not everybody. People who really, really, really know me. And people knowing you is not even about how close you guys are or how long you guys have been friends, right? People that will know you are those who really pay attention. It's not just everybody that, that can know you, no. People that really pay attention to you very well, right? So, aside those people, and not generally, people have a perception of me, which partially might be my fault and partially might not be, but it is what it is. Like, again, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure this it thinks, yes, that's thing you think I'm thinking. That is exactly what I'm thinking. There's really no point trying to dissuade people or trying to appeal to people or try to convince people or try to explain too much to people. No, 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 no. Explain to those who... Or explain in cases where an explanation makes sense and will bring, you know, a change or a positive result or the results you want. In those cases, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really... I'm not totally against explaining yourself. You know, it's okay to explain yourself. But if you see that people are bent on misunderstanding you or perceiving you in a different light and you've checked yourself and you see that this thing people are saying about you is not true. You've checked yourself. You've seen that the way people perceive you is not true. Just that maybe because you have certain character or certain traits, they now form a whole picture that is very, very incomplete or very, very wrong. It is what it is. Again, just move on with your life. Those that like you will like you. Those that don't like you will never like you. Okay? Those that like you will look for every excuse to like you. And those that don't like you will look for every excuse to not like you. That is facts. Money is not everything for me. To me. Okay? I have just... I've just come to that realization. Maybe I've been deceiving myself before that. Oh, I like money. I like... I used to say to I like money. Ah, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. I like money as much as the next woman, okay? Or the next girl. <laughs> I do like money. I don't think there's anybody that say they hate money. No. Like, I do like money. I need money for certain things. I need, I need financial freedom to be able to have the freedom to do certain things. So, I like having money or I like money. Don't get me wrong, right? But money is not everything to me. I've seen it. <coughs> trying to get that extra, extra. Every time, trying to get the extra, extra. It's not worth it. I've looked at it. I beg. It's not worth it. Especially for me. Not for other people. So, yeah, I'm talking about myself. Lessons I learned in the past one year. Why I titled this video? The one I learned. Uh -huh. You can say your own in the comment section. So, yeah, money is not everything to me because I've seen people walk themselves almost to the grave and nothing came out of it. Like, at the end of it, they got the money they wanted to get, but their life was not anything worth emulating. Their children's lives are not anything worth emulating. Like... Not to explain it, when the Bible says, or when Jesus said, what, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It actually makes sense to me right now, right? So, 
I'm not saying I don't want money. I'm not saying money is not important. It's important, but money is not everything to me. I feel like with all the things that happened to me in the last one year, I feel like my, my goal right now is peace of mind, happiness, stability, like being good to others. People should be able to say, oh, if not for, if not for a daisy or because of Adezi, this this good thing happened to me. Because of Adezi, this good fortune came my way or this good information came my way. That's what I'm, I'm now more concerned about. I'm no longer concerned. It's not like I was ever concerned about money like that. But now more than ever, I am now more conscious of, okay, good deeds, trying to help others. It doesn't even have to be monetary, okay? It doesn't have to be monetary. Being there for others, just... I feel like I kind of do it somehow with my YouTube. At least I can say I put out some good information that helps people. <laughs> Let me start want to console myself. At least some people have told me that I've helped them in one way or the other. You know, even with my infertility journey. That, that reminds me, I think I'm going to do a Q&A on infertility. Like anybody that has questions on battling infertility, I'll do a Q&A on it because... The last videos I filmed about infertility, I got to meet people responding with, you know, they tried what I said, they did what I said, or something in my video helped them and they got their babies. And that is, that to me is like mind blowing. Okay. It's mind blowing. But I want to go further than that. I want to actually help people in real life. I want to help spread the word of God. I want to help people in real life okay which is not so easy when you're not someone that likes to go out like that but you know the few times i go out i go try <laughs> but i will try but yeah i feel like that's what my goal is right now people should be able to say oh because of this this good thing happened for me because at the end of the day this life is very fragile oh hey there was one news i heard that happened something happened recently in my family and that one pained me i don't know how to explain the like it it just felt like I don't know how to explain. I don't. Want to, I don't want to sound somehow, but why this thing pained me so much was the untapped potential. The untapped potential is what really, you know, pained me with this with the news, right? So because of it, I'm like, don't be there feeling sorry for another person's untapped potential. You you don't tap your own finish. Have you tapped your own? Have you tapped your children's own? You see, every time people just wake up, be doing your normal routines. Is that how you're going to tap your potential? It doesn't work like that. So. Yeah, those are my thoughts. This is my therapy session. I feel like I just came to do therapy with you guys. <laughs> Let me know if you learned anything from my video. I know that I didn't go into details about some things, but you know, you guys get the points generally. Let me know the things you also learned in the past one year and you know, things that you are reflecting on. If you have anything to add to anything that I said, let me know in the comment section. You know what? In the comment section, please leave a comment and tell me a topic or something you want me to give my opinions on, right? So, for instance, I saw somebody do this video. Hey, what was her name? Anel Amon. So, people will ask her, oh, what do you think about um, giving birth? What do you think about using epidural? What do you think about just general life things? So, it doesn't have to do with just giving birth. Uh, what do you think about um, marrying somebody who has been married three times? You know, Anything, Sha, you guys get the point. Just anything you want to hear my opinion on, just put basically Q&A, but in a different way. Just like basically, I want to know your opinion on this, right? Just leave it in the comment section. I'll gather all of them and film in a different video, okay? So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.